On today's show, Singapore's Newtonomy becomes the first company to offer autonomous ride sharing to the public. A new study shows drivers need more education when it comes to automatic emergency braking and why upgrading our fuel is an easy solution to reducing emissions. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for the 25th of August for 2016. With the amount of technology that's crammed into cars today, it's even more important than ever for drivers to fully understand each system and how they work. And according to AAA, more education needs to be done with automatic emergency braking. The agency recently conducted a series of tests on vehicles equipped with the technology and found that the systems vary greatly in performance. For example, systems designed to prevent crashes reduce vehicle speeds by twice that of systems that are designed to only lessen crash severity. While both systems avoid crash situations under 30 miles per hour pretty well, the more robust systems do a much better job at reducing vehicle speeds when pushed to and beyond their limits. You may remember back in March that a group of 20 automakers announced they will make automatic emergency braking standard on all cars by 2022. So as more cars get equipped with the technology, you can see why it would be important for someone to know which system they have, especially when 66% of Americans currently think auto emergency braking systems are designed to avoid crashes without driver intervention. California is gearing up to enact even stricter greenhouse gas regulations. The state legislature just approved a bill that will cut emissions 40% below 1990 levels by 2030. It also passed a separate measure that increases legislative oversight over the California Air Resources Board. The bill still need approval from Governor Jerry Brown, but he has already stated that he will sign them into law. The emissions reduction bill doesn't specify how the state will achieve the goal. However, lawmakers say the new law will affect all industries, so it won't just be the automakers that have to shoulder the burden. And speaking of reducing emissions, coming up next we'll take a look at how making changes to our fuel can help achieve those goals. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. There's been a lot of focus on the new engine technology needed to meet future fuel economy regulations. But there's another way to improve emissions, and that's by upgrading the fuel we use, either through increasing the octane or the use of ethanol. Recently on AutoLine This Week, we were joined by three powertrain experts, and here's what they have to say about the benefits of those solutions. You know, certainly as you go forward, we could see that um, alternate fuels or lower carbon fuels will play a significant role. Um, perhaps even if we look at, um, you know, the introduction of higher um, percentages of ethanol into gasoline. And, and maybe one of the advantages without costing uh, more on the vehicle side is to look at uh, upping the minimum octane rating on fuels and allowing uh, OEMs to optimize the compression ratio in engines, which would actually give a, an efficiency benefit without actually adding cost to the whole system. So you're absolutely right. I mean, the use of alternate fuels, the addition of, of ethanol blends um, would be a, a, a good improvement to actually drive efficiency. Paul, do you see that happening? I, I know in Europe you get higher octane fuels than you do here. I know the engine people here have been calling for higher octane. What, what are your thoughts of that ever happening and perhaps taking more of the carbon out of gasoline as well? Yeah, you're right there. I mean, uh, you can't buy regular grade gasoline in, in Europe anymore, so it's mid-grade or premium. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're always hindered by the fact that we need to develop engines here to run on regular grade gasoline. and. Uh, because of the lower octane number, then uh, performance and fuel economy start to spiral downward. So it's a big challenge, and if uh, we could optimize engines only to operate on premium fuel, then life would be a lot easier for us, and we'd be able to uh, see much more of a benefit in terms of uh, efficiency. But I think it's going to be very difficult uh, to make the change, 
and especially when you look at the cost increase. I guess there's some precedent there really with uh, ultra low sulfur diesel that was introduced and that was all that's available from that point onwards. If we could do the same with premium fuel and have only premium fuel available and that would be good but look at the difference between a gallon of premium fuel and regular and its significance. So it's it's significant. very diffi it, difficult. It, it, no, it very much is. There's another precedent too because in the 1970s we banned lead in gasoline yep. and there was a huge transition to go through in that mm -hmm. on both the refining and the engine yep. side and we made it happen. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah. But there is that cost issue too, and the public doesn't want to see the cost of gasoline yeah, going up. I think the other thing is that ethanol. I mean, if ethanol was widely available, then our life uh, as uh, developers of gasoline engines would become much easier. We wouldn't need variable compression ratio and all of these technologies, and especially in terms of CO2 benefit, we would be able to compete, compete very well with diesel. For a more in-depth look into the internal combustion engine and how it can be improved to meet future fuel economy standards, Check out that show on our website, Autoline.tv, or look for it on our YouTube channel. Coming up next, a Singapore-based startup becomes the first company to offer autonomous ride-sharing to the public. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. The race to get autonomous vehicles on the road is heating up. Last week, Uber announced it's starting an autonomous ride-sharing pilot program in Pittsburgh by the end of the month but it won't be the first company to let the public experience self-driving technology. Singapore-based startup Newtonomy just beat them to the punch. Today it launched an autonomous taxi service for select residents in Singapore. The company is using electric versions of the Renault Zoe and Mitsubishi i My EV, equipped with its autonomous technology for the trial. All rides will be supervised by an engineer who will be able to take control of the vehicle if needed. Newtonomy plans to make the service more widely available in Singapore by 2018. You know, not all good things have to come to an end. After a successful first year, America's Car Museum and the North American International Auto Show will once again put on the drive home. If you don't remember, it's a winter road rally that started at the museum's headquarters in Tacoma, Washington and ended in Detroit. The same three cars will spearhead the 2,100-mile trek, a 1957 Chevy Nomad, a 1961 Chrysler 300G, and a 1966 Ford Mustang. The cars will arrive in Detroit on the opening day of the North American International Auto Show, but this time, they'll start off in Boston. Those interested can join in on cars and coffee events, happy hours, and get-togethers in cities along the tour. Just click the link in today's show notes to see if they'll be stopping near you. And don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours this afternoon. Our special guest is Maddie Vint, the head of R&D at Vallejo's powertrain operations in North America. He's bringing an experimental Lincoln MKZ equipped with an electric supercharger to the studio to explain how it all works. So join John and Gary for some of the most interesting insights into the automotive industry right here on AutoLine.tv at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow for the latest news in the global automotive industry.